Let's go for a ride. It's a new day and time for a new uh, bag out of the auto wire kit. It is section J, which it says is engine kit. Let's find out together what's in here. All right, well, I was gonna uncoil this mess, but I halfway don't wanna do it until they find out what's going on here. As you would have thunk with the name engine kit, we got stuff for the uh, distributor, coil, alternator, starter, etc so let me do some uh, reading and we'll figure out how to get going on this bad boy all right is my head smoking it's been a minute i've been trying to wrap my head around all these instructions because there is plenty of them and i haven't read past like step one on this one that was enough to get my head turning and thinking and took me down a whole little rabbit hole i think it's weird because maybe i maybe i'm the only one but uh you're supposed to install these in order, right? So this is number J or number, number J. I'm super smart, letter J. Um, so I get out letter J, this is the underhood one. First thing you do is connect the large red wire in this kit to the 175 amp mega fuse uh, using the terminals, blah, 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 and alternator connection kit. Well, that's kit Z, the last one you install. So you have to skip from this one to get to the last one, open it up and I don't know. Anyways, I don't know if there's the right order to do it, but so then I opened up Z, which has these big fuses. So you have uh, your battery, to the starter and then you put these big fuses in line which is probably a great idea uh, and i'm going to do it but uh, i just it got me to thinking that i also have to do uh, i'm doing a trunk mounted battery and i gotta have a kill switch for nhra so i can't really just follow you know what they're doing here i gotta as usual i gotta make it harder i was trying to remember how i did the 57 and i looked at what i did there and then i looked at a couple wiring diagrams basically in my little chicken scratch what i'm going to do is battery which is going to be in the trunk it's just going to go to ground and then we're going to have an, a dedicated line that's going to go right from the battery uh, i put it through a fuse and then it's going to go right to the alternator so over here on this diagram i'm not going to do the starter to the fuse and the fuse to the alternator i can't do that and have the kill switch work. So these little red wires with the crosses are going bye-bye. So we're gonna go from the battery to the alternator with a fuse in between and then a kill switch. And then pretty much everything else is gonna come off of this kill switch so that when I shut the kill switch down, everything will die. If I leave the alternator wired how they have it, uh, the alternator will, you know, it's charging the battery. You can run with the battery disconnected and alternator. So the, the car has to shut off for the NHRA kill switch thing. So this is how I did the 57, it works. The only kind of, you know, thing that people don't like or that's, you could get fancy and there's four wire kill switches and they, they soak the voltage up. I don't know. This is what I did because it was cheaper, but 
your your red wire here to your alternator it doesn't have to be red but your hot wire to your alternator even when you kill your kill, kill switch still has power but everything else shuts off so i do put a fuse in that in case you were in like a rollover or a crash and this wire got pinched or something so it eventually you know is going to cut the power to that too um, there's maybe other ways to do it but i found this somewhere a long time ago when i did the 57 and so it worked so that's what i'm going to do again uh, so power will come into the starter after going through the kill switch i'll have a lug coming off the starter into this fuse then there's a fuse that goes in here and then we'll have this will then run into the under dash into the msd box and anyways this will just be a good hot spot on the firewall or wherever I decide to mount this so i think i got a plan now after i got my head all wrapped around it I, of course i don't have the uh kill switch and all that stuff on hand yet i can kind of start from the starter you know i can do the kill switch battery box all that stuff i do have the battery box but i don't have any of the cables and all that stuff so anyways that's gonna all be part of this process maybe i'll make a whole separate video of just wiring in that part of it yeah enough blabbering um i gotta start somewhere all right several minutes maybe even hours later and lots of head scratching going through these instructions uh scribbling down my own instructions going back and forth to the car trying to come up with a plan i think it, i haven't got any work done but i came up with a plan so this group this engine kit j has a lot of wires and i'm not going to use hardly any of them uh, i already talked about i think that i'm kind of doing this different because of the battery in the trunk and the cutoff switch so these big mega fuse things are going to all be different and then i'm also installing an msd box so a lot of this stuff is going to be different so i have this big group of wires here um i'm going to use a red one for power White one's going to the coil. One of them's for an electric choke. I don't have an electric choke, but I'll put it in there. And the rest of them are like voltage regulator, temperature sender, oil sender. Uh, the other wire that went to the starter when you used to have a, uh, if you're using a resistor block and something else. Anyways, it's like these one, two, three, four, five wires I'm not using. There was one more wire. That's a purple wire goes to the starter. So basically that's all I've done is getting started on the starter. about how to run these wires. So this is the big MSD block of wires that all have to go somewhere. I have this little, this is part of the ADA or American Auto Wire kit. There's two of these. I'm only gonna use, well, I'm gonna use two of them. One of them's gonna be separate kind of for the battery kill switch thing. The other one I'm gonna use right here on the firewall. And again, I'm kind of going rogue on this. this. Isn't how you're supposed to do it according to the instructions, but I gotta make some changes with what I'm doing. So this guy is gonna go right here somewhere um, it's going to get power from the starter with this little wire or this little cable i got it done on that end i just have to cut it to length and figure out where that's going to go well bam uh, then that's going to go through this mega fuse and then coming out the other side will be the wire that goes into the dash and then along with all these wires Rather than wrapping them up over the top of the firewall, my plan was to shoot them through the firewall right here, but I thought I had lots of space inside here, but I forgot about the, I didn't forget about the heater motor. Um, so there's the heater motor. It doesn't take a lot of spot in the heater box, but for some reason I can't find, there's a big housing that goes on here and I can't, I can't find that. I know I have it, but uh, I don't know. I spent half my day looking for that. So uh, my good buddy from the Tri-5 Mob, David Bacon, sent me some pictures. Thanks, David. And uh, now I know that my idea will still work. I just gotta be a little more specific with my wires. So I'm gonna punch them through right below the heater box right here. So I'm gonna have a big group of wires come through right here, and then I'm gonna sneak them up, and I'll strap them up here somehow magically. And that'll get them all, 
you know, all out of the way here. So I'm not gonna have any wires going across the top of the firewall or behind the engine. I'm gonna send all of them inside, even the ones that go, like a couple of these, some of these go to the distributor, some go to the coil, but rather than having those wires coming down, I'm already gonna have wires coming out of here. So I'm gonna send them inside and then I'll send them back out together. So those will hook up there right, real nice. Uh, ground, ignition, tack, distributor, coil. Uh, like I said, this is gonna go to the fuse. This from the starter, this has to also go in with this group of wires into the ignition or into the, uh, I think it goes to the fuse box that we installed along with another hot wire. So that's the theory. I guess this one hot wire can stay out here. It'll go to that. Anyways, we'll get it all jumbled together. I at least have a plan. So next plan of attack is I got to drill a hole right there. Oh, and as usual, as I get ready to drill this, it took me way too long, way too, far too long uh, to decide that this is what I was going to do. So. Man, if you're like me, you gotta just quit overthinking everything and uh, drill the damn hole. I don't know, I just, I debate, should I go this way, should I go that way? What, what if I do this? I mean, I guess it's good to think it through, but I'm just, I'm never gonna get done if I think everything through. So, uh, try to change? Probably won't. Let me think about this hole a little more. Just kidding, I drilled it, baby. Well, now I gotta go get a dang grommet because I can't run the wires through there without the rubber grommet, so. Off to town. All right. I'm back with my grommet. Well, I got back with my grommet yesterday and I actually did quite a bit of work after I got back with the grommet. I just didn't really film anything. Just in and out of the car 8 million times. I'll tell you one thing I'm glad I did is the removable door bars. Man, worth their weight in gold while you're doing the wiring harness because how many times you get in and out? I mean, I guess if a guy had a helper, somebody to hand you this, every time you get under the dash, you realize you left the crimpers or the wire cutter or whatever you need, it's not in there. And then you gotta go get it and then, Maybe that's just me. I'm pretty sure it's everybody, but uh, removable door bars, the way to go on this deal. So I'm back out today. I had to work a little bit this morning and I came out and I, I've done a little bit of stuff this morning, but uh, let's just turn around the old camera and show you where we're at. Like I said, I didn't film much, so we'll just show you what I did and talk about it. Lame, I know. So there's my grommet, my hole in my grommet. So all my MSD wires go shunk right through the dash there. I grounded it right here to the body. I scraped the paint off. This is where the battery box used to bolt. And then I will have, uh, there's a lug down here, so I'll have the body grounded to the engine and then somewhere I'll ground the body to the frame. And then I have solid engine mounts, so I probably don't need this, but I do have the engine grounded to the frame as well. So hopefully my grounds will all be good and it won't be a big deal that this is grounded to the body. Uh, the power wire for the MSD comes out right here, goes to the lug. We got uh, starter wired. Uh, the purple wire goes into the dash. Obviously the power wire just goes to there. So the only thing that will be added here is there'll be a wire coming from the trunk mounted battery, a heavier gauge battery cable, obviously, and then that'll go right to the starter lug. And then all this is done. I got the little cover on there. Uh, so the MSD wires dive into the dash and they do their magic back there. And then this, these are from the MSD box, but I just didn't want to run them across right here. I don't know, I'm gonna have a couple other wires coming out right here. So I was just trying to keep it a little tidy. So coil plug-in and distributor plug-in go right there. Uh, so that's about it for out here for now. Under the dash, the uh, wires come in right there if you can see them. And then I cleaned up a little bit. I still have some organizing to do for sure, but um, all the wires from the MSD box sneak up over the heater box. And then they go, some of them go back out. Some of them go to this plug here. Um, Kind of got some excess wire. I just kind of coiled it up and wound it up right there. This is one more wire for the MSD box that I still got to hook up. And then there was a whole bunch of wires in that last kit that I was doing. Voltage regulator, oil sender, temp sender, that kind of stuff I didn't use. But those went to this plug. So I just unplugged the ones I didn't need. And then I still got the tack. This coil wire here, that's gonna be, that's an electric choke. So in case I ever, my carburetor right now doesn't have an electric choke, but just threw that in there so I can grab it later if we need it. And the pink is going to the MSD box. Uh, this purple and yellow coil up here, if you can see it, I think that's all for an electronic speedometer. There's a whole bunch of wires and fittings, or wires and, uh, what? connections a whole bunch of wires and connections for that also that are in a bag over that i didn't use but again i'm just throwing it all up there in case someday i do put an electronic speedometer in it so uh let's see i zip tied this big bundle of wires to the dash braces to try to organize it so i have these wires still to kind of try to organize a little better they come across these go to the clock if you had one and the 
courtesy light for the door and a couple other things there. So now we still just have this jumbled mess here and uh, we'll see what's next. Speaking of jumbled messes, holy cow, I mean, I got every piece of wiring stuff I own scattered. There's all the extra stuff so far, more instructions, instructions, uh, more stuff over here. My wiring box, I'm digging for fittings and or terminals or whatever in there. Uh, so anyways, we got to get that cleaned up and open up the next baggie and see where we're headed. All right, sorry. I just lied to you. I was uh, looking through what I all I had left over for this. This is the Mega Fuse kit. And like I explained before, I just used one of them. And I was just kind of picking this up, trying to clean up a little bit. And then I saw two of these fuses in here. And I was like, aha, I guess I'm not done with this because I got all my wires hooked up. But you got to put the actual fuse in there. Otherwise, none of these are connected. So we got to do that too. So I cleaned up a little bit. Not really, just the table here. And then I got the old, uh, went to the old big box of wires to find out what's next. And the next kit is kit K, park lamp, parking lamp and headlight grommet kit. Well, you know, I don't think it's really time for this over there yet. So then I was just looking through the big box of wires and seeing what all I had. And then I was like, well, when do you hook up like the, I have all these, you know, connections in here. None of that stuff's hooked up. Well, again, you gotta go back to reading the fine print. When I did the under dash harness, I just kind of slung everything in here and, and looked at the big picture, but you gotta kind of go through all the little parts here. And uh, so it talks about, you know, hooking up the ignition switch and turn signal switch. And So I'm gonna uh, read some more. I think I'm gonna actually go in order and try to follow the instructions instead of just skipping ahead and uh, see if that's gonna lead us or guide us through hooking the rest of this under dash thing up so we can kind of get that straightened out a little bit. And then uh, parking lamps, obviously I'm not gonna do. The rear harness, I think is next after that. And I could, you know, run that in here. I don't have my taillights and stuff in, but I could get that kind of straightened out that we might do that. And then even the front harness, I think once we get this stuff under the dash kind of straightened up, we could get that front harness and figure out how that plugs in and kind of get those wires just kind of, you know, laying out here. So that's our plan for today. I'm gonna jump back in and get back to this uh, under dash harness. All these little extra connections I have. Dimmer switch, headlight switch. They give you a new ignition switch. So uh, let's turn to that. Since I were being uh, good little boys and following the instructions in order, uh, step number one is dimmer switch. So you got this wire that comes right down Chandra and that goes to the dimmer switch and they give you a new dimmer switch. I just thought I'd show you guys a quick little uh, Comparison to the old and the new, this is the old dimmer switch. This used to mount from underneath. It would come through the floorboard and then the connection was outside in the dirt and the grime and whatnot. Looks like now they've switched it. So we're just gonna bolt it to the same spot, but it just bolts to the floor and then these wires plug into it. So I gotta find some hardware for that. And then we'll uh, move on to step number two. Hold up, time out. Back to step one. Um, nothing could be easy, right? So here's the switch with the wires hooked up. I'll have to kind of mess with the wires a little bit, but their connector runs right into this little uh, brace right here. This is like, I think where your kick panel would ride to keep it from kicking in. So I'm gonna cut a little slot out of there so that the uh, wires have a place to go besides jamming right into that metal. Gotta get the grinder. Dimmer switch installed. Uh, I didn't get out the grinder, I just used the old uh, tin snips, snip snip and bent it out of the way. Worked pretty good. So that's done. Number two is this accessory plug here. So this is all uh, additional stuff. You know, power seats, power windows, power locks, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I will use this to run a fuel pump because I'm going to run an electric fuel pump most likely. So we'll hook that up later. But that's, uh, they give you, of course, some ends and, and a, the other end of this plug. So we'll deal with that later. So basically, number two is crossed off the list for now. Number three is the headlight switch. Still working on the headlight switch because of course it can't be as easy as I said, just drill the hole and put it in. You also have to drill out your little bezel. Uh, that's pretty easy. It's pretty soft. I don't know what, if it's what it, it's actually plastic, it feels like metal, but uh, I was able to just hold it in my hand like so and then drill it out. Um, the other issue is the new headlight switch 
has a little tab right there. I don't know if you can see that in the light at all. But that tab obviously fits in this little slot and that's what holds it from turning. And then your bezel also has that little slot to hold it in the right spot. The little tab doesn't stick through far enough. It barely sticks into the dash is what I'm realizing. But part of my problem is it's still not going to stick through far enough, I don't think. When you drill this hole, you get some little metal, uh, you know, hanger honors back here. And that, well, I was tightening it up and I couldn't get it to suck flat. So I tried prying them off with the screwdriver, that didn't work. So now we're gonna see if we can get this guy in here somehow, which it doesn't look like we can. Hold on. All right, I got it in there. I had to come in from the glove box with the little uh, belt sander thing. But I got that smoothed off back there. So now we'll try again. Got the wires plugged in, obviously. No, it fits on there. It doesn't rock as much, but still that tab doesn't stick through far enough to hold this guy in place. But, uh, oh well, we'll make it all work out one way or another. All right, so just a little tip, just in case, you know, you drill that out, just be prepared. You got to get that, or at least I had to get that little bit of metal that hangs on on the backside from drilling it out of the way. And now it seems like it's going to go in a lot smoother, so I'll get this tightened up, get my little bezel lined up right and we'll figure out what's next. All right, follow along with the instructions. We did the headlight switch, then it says rear body for number five is front lap, and number six is left hand courtesy. And I think that's why I kind of thought you're just gonna kind of install all this later because I haven't installed the wiring to hook those plugs up yet. Uh, but anyway, some of this stuff is ready, some of it isn't. So number seven is the wiper feed. So I was just trying to figure out the wipers. I have an electric wiper motor, and I used to have wipers on this thing uh, back in the day. I had an electric motor, and I think I just had it hooked to a toggle switch. And I think the motor burned up, and I took it all apart. And uh, I think somewhere I still have pieces and parts of that. But in a box, I found I, didn't, you know, I, had it. I got another wiper motor, and I just hooked it up to the battery, and it works. So I was trying to figure out on the schematic here why it just shows one wiper motor or shows one wire for the wiper motor and it goes from the fuse box so the wire goes from the fuse box and it just says wiper switch or motor so it's just one wire i was like why don't they give you a wire to the switch and then another wire from the switch to the motor or what's the deal with that uh, but it's just the one wire so i did a little exploring and investigating with my battery and stuff and uh, i found out how this thing is supposed to work so what i had before i think is i just had it hooked up to a uh, toggle switch and i can still do that and i think i might do that because it's easiest uh, but this is the original switch and uh, i thought this was for like a vacuum motor maybe it works for a vacuum wiper motor too with these two guys here but the wiper motor has a plastic slide on it and once it's powered up you that slide you pull that slide on and that's what turns the wiper on so this is supposed to have a cable coming out of it you can kind of see just barely it's broke off or cut off and so there would be power and ground at the motor and then you would turn this it would pull the lever and that's what turns the wipers on and then when you turn it it turns it back off but then it also, it seems like it lets it run for a second so i think it lets it like self park or if i just hook it up with toggle switch it's going to just shut off wherever they are and you got to sit there and play with it. So I took the switch out of there and I don't can't figure out any way to replace this cable. So there's no way really that this comes apart that I can tell. I mean, there's some sort of weird things right here. Maybe I'll play with it a little bit because if I could just replace the cable, I would hook it up like that and use the cable to run it so it's self part. If I can't replace the cable, it looks like these are like a hundred bucks for this switch. So I don't know that I'll buy one. I'll probably just hook it up to a toggle switch. But uh, anyways, I guess for now the wipers are done because I got to paint the wiper motor. I got to figure out the switch, but I know where the wire is to hook it up when we get to there. So moving on to cluster ground, took care of that on the cluster and the brake switch. So we'll check that out next. All right, hold on, I'm back because these little things actually do unscrew off the back of this switch. Let's see what we find when we open this bad boy up. Spring. Oh yeah, that comes apart. Ah, still no access to cable. There's a hole in this side. I wonder if it just stalls through there. All right, more messing around with that. All right, I wasted uh, enough time going down that rabbit hole. I can't figure out a way to get this cable off here. I took this all apart. Uh, I don't know, these might be, you guys out there, somebody knows, but was this a washer? Push this button and it would squirt fluid. There's like a little spring assembly in here and mine doesn't really, even after taking it apart, like this part sticks. So the spring isn't enough to push it back or something. But anywho, uh, if you guys know how to replace this cable, let me know. Otherwise, 
Google tells me these are usually around 100 bucks, and I don't know that I'll do that. I'll probably just hook it up to a uh, toggle switch. But we'll just throw it back in there for now to fill the hole in the dash, and we'll put the white wire aside and move on to whatever I said was next. Uh, I'll probably go eat a sandwich first, though. I'm hungry. All right, well, I found the brake switch wiring. Just a couple, there's a couple individual plugs, two wires each, easy enough. I got them routed to kind of where they go. Uh, but my brake switch itself, it's not looking so good. And uh, this reminds me, or brings me to uh, talking about one of the reasons I need this new wiring harness, I, I would probably need it anyways. The car is 800 years old and this stuff's all old and brittle if it was all original. But uh, back in the day, this is back in high school, I, used to, I was driving the car and I wanted to paint the dash. So I had the dash, all the gauges, I had the dash all tore apart. You know, just had obviously what I needed to be able to still drive it hooked up. And I had thought I had everything taped up pretty good, but I remember uh, cruising one night and all of a sudden I started smelling a little bit of burnt wiring and I was close to the gas station so I just you know shut the key off and I rolled into the gas station but by the time I got there I mean smoke was just billowing out of my windows I hopped out and disconnected the battery as fast as I could and didn't have any fire but totally melted almost all the under dash wiring at least who knows what else I don't remember so I bought a new under dash wiring harness and maybe some new I think I tried to convert it to an alternator at that time so like an alternator harness and I didn't learn my lesson apparently because I think I put the dash back together because I did get it painted, but I still had something short out at some point and burned most of that one down again. Not as bad, I was able to just kind of cut through and take the few burned wires out. Hopefully that's not gonna happen again. And uh, yeah, it definitely needed a new harness and it definitely needs a new brake switch. And that brings us to ignition switch. And uh, if any of you guys have taken the ignition switch out of your 55 Chevy, you know what this is for. Send lock, put it in. All right, I just did it. Maybe it's on off. I thought I had it on lock, put it in the hole, and you turn it actually counterclockwise. And it pops, it's supposed to pop right out. You gotta wiggle it a little bit apparently. All right, what's next? Yes. Guess we gotta loosen this bad boy up. Luckily for me, it wasn't very tight, just hand tight. Got your bezel and your little locking collar, and well, bam, out she goes. Let's go look. I'm guessing that the new one is different. Let's find out. Definitely uh, different. So again, you're not going to be able to just replace or the wiring and save your old ignition switch or vice versa because the new wiring will not hook up to the old switch. Looks like this one used to have a spot for a light too. No light in this guy. Uh, no new tumbler, so I guess that's the way you end up keeping your old key, I guess. And I don't know, it's probably some instructions, but we'll put it in there and see. I'm guessing this goes together like so once it's on there. All right, I'll, I'll read the instructions for good measure, but I don't really need to, right? All right, I did some more reading. I didn't really learn anything I didn't already know on this one, except for it says the uh, key may not line up in the original position. Like before my on and off, the key was straight up and down. So it says it may not line up like that. And to get that to line up right, you might have to file. I guess I gotta read what you gotta file because there's nothing on here to file. Maybe it's something on your dash. Oh, there's a flat spot right there. Well, bam. So if that's not right, then you gotta file your dash down to where this turns where you want it and then you tighten it up. So, so we'll uh, go find out. Upon further investigation of the old ignition switch and the new ignition switch, uh, the new one has this flat spot and the instructions, which I read, see reading instructions doesn't always do any good because it was a waste of my time in this case, says that you gotta file out the flat spot in your dash to make this line up how you want it. There is no flat spot on the dash because in my dash, there's just a little uh, slot right there that lines it up. It's not a flat spot. This just fits right in there and turns any which way. So hopefully with the backing nut and, the, and such, you can get it tight and in the position you want it and it's not gonna rotate. So we'll find out. Back with more ignition switch information. So the flat spot doesn't coordinate with anything on my dash. Uh, my dash just has a round hole. I guess it has the little keyway for this guy. Uh, but the only thing that does happen is this will not rotate freely on here because of that little tit on there. And of course, it doesn't end up as far as the labeling in the right spot. So I'm just gonna file this little tit off of here and try again. And well, bam, she's installed. Off on start, off lock, and we're getting fancy nowadays. 
accessory. Ooh. All right, next is turn signal switch. The harness has been manufactured with a kind of more modern, like seven blade thing or whatever. And I have the, uh, what do I have? I did it, steering column. So those should plug right together. So we gotta go in and do that. And then we have an orange wire for a lighter and then black, green, dark green for a horn relay. And the horn relay, you just plug this guy into, I guess. It was in this other fuse flasher bag. So back under the dash. All right, I got taken down another rabbit hole by the stinking cigarette lighter. First of all, I guess I couldn't figure out what kind of uh, wire plugged into it. On the new harness, they give you a wire with the end like this, with just like a, you know, the spade plug-in type deal. Um, this just has the old round guy in it. And so I thought, well, I'm gonna try to get it out of there so I can figure it out. And uh, all it does is this little, you reach under the dash, got to hold the front part still, and then this little casing screws off, but it was kind of like seized together. I had to get in there with channel locks and kind of screwed up the front of it, trying to hold it, but we eventually got her out of there. And then, uh, where's the rest of it? Losing my mind. Oh, <laughs> it's right there. So, and then, didn't doesn't seem like this really, I mean, it kind of goes in and it's a little sticky, but let's be honest, nobody's ever gonna use this cigarette lighter. So I'm not gonna worry about like buying a new one. It's a little sticky in there. It look good sitting there. And we all know that something like that's all that's really ever gonna be in there. So I hooked up a hot wire and ground it and the little light on this guy came on. So something's working in there. So we're gonna put it back together. So I'm gonna change the fitting on the wire or the, I keep calling them fittings. I'm gonna change the end on the wire. I said they have one of these guys. I'm gonna to switch to, this is like one of the ones, I guess I would assume it was originally on this, uh, also goes to like the uh, fuel gauge. So it has the round plug in and then this protector on it. So we're gonna go put this on that wire, put this back in the dash, and uh, we'll be on to something new. So that last little bit was steering column. That's this big guy here. It was just pretty much plug and play. They did give you like six foot too much wire, not, you know, I don't know, 12 inches too much wire. So that's this bundle of wires right here. I wrapped it around this brace a couple times, zip tied it. So it kind of holds everything up out of the way. There's the connection right there. Uh, let's see what else do we do. Horn relay is this uh, relay plugged into a wiring harness right there. It just plugs in. So I just kind of secured it up out of the way. And then the last was the lighter, which I already showed you how I put the little, uh, other end on it. All right, we're getting there. I still have this group of wires right here. We got a pink wire, a ground wire down here to do something with. A white wire, I think, goes to my tack. Uh, these are, oh, those are the brake switch, once I get a new brake switch. And then we got these ones over here. So let's, uh, let's do what we should do and go back to the instructions and see what's next. Wiring update 479. The last few things we did, there's these giant purple wires. One goes to the starter. Uh, the other end just goes to the ignition, I think. So they're basically just broken in half. Or they're not broken, it's just two separate wires. And then they're hung, they're long, so they come down to here. And their purpose is a neutral safety switch. A neutral safety switch, at least by the NHRA, is only required in automatics. Uh, this, obviously, four speed, baby. So I should have just cut them short and uh, spliced them together and called it good. But I left them long enough, they're kind of wrapped back and forth, that it could still come down to work for a neutral safety switch if in the event somebody was ever dumb enough to put an automatic transmission in here. That won't be me, but uh, somebody else could someday. Uh, the next wires were pink and green, and those are for a reverse backup switch. And I left them long because it would be handy to have a reverse backup switch and Hearst makes a switch or maybe I can figure something out. Uh, so for now, I just hung them up because I don't have a switch for it. We'll see if I ever get to that. Maybe I'll just put them on a toggle switch. That'll be easier. I can just toggle switch. It's not uh, convenient, but uh, it's a race car. And then we had an orange wire and this goes to the glove box light, which I thought was just a light socket thing that stuck in here. And I was like, well, how does it, is this always on or you got to turn it on or, but that's not really what it is. There's a little switch that goes in here um, that has a plunger and then the lights back here further that turns the light on. I don't have that switch. I don't have a glove box either. I just got this big empty space here. So I should probably maybe get both of those someday. I think this big orange wire here is for the heater. So we got to take this little connection apart here and figure out how it works next. All right, hold everything, pause the build. NHL hockey playoffs, baby, game two, Avalanche versus uh, the Kraken, I guess they're playing. I've got their butts kicked the first night, but uh, 
game time, I'm going in to watch game two.